Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday, August 30th, and here in the Atlantic, we're ending the month of August now without a hurricane, and this is getting really late now. The latest forming first hurricane of a season came in 2002 when Hurricane Gustave developed on September 11th, so if we get past that date, it will be the latest we've ever had a hurricane form for the first time in an Atlantic hurricane season, so that just says a lot about how quiet August has been so far this year. I still think a burst is coming in September. We have a lot of conditions lining up now. Uh, we have the MJO uh, finally coming uh, towards phase one here. You can see a lot of convection starting to go off now, more so in the Western Caribbean, indicating that the MJO is slowly coming east, bringing this upward motion into an area where it can enhance thunderstorms in the tropical Atlantic. And it's getting later in the year. The continents are starting to cool off in here as we get into the fall months. Heat waves don't mean as much in here, and that means less suppressive uh, motion up here or less convection over the continents and uh, more upward motion available to the tropics and sometimes in these years when the Atlantic uh, conditions are pretty good for tropical activity but not ideal sometimes the Atlantic just needs a little bit of a push over the edge to actually get going and sometimes the cooling of the continents and the MJO coming over to help is all uh, the Atlantic really needs to get started uh, but it's starting pretty late this year I do think we'll have the burst during the next four to six weeks though and we should finally start seeing hurricanes out in the middle of the ocean here and uh, we'll see if any of those affect land or not um, but right now not a lot going on the most immediate threat is a wave coming off of Africa and uh, we'll be moving west northwest and could become a tropical depression or storm right in the middle of the Cape Verde Islands here the European and GFS suggest that and the NHC has a high chance for development of this over the next uh, two to five days and eventually we'll probably die out here to colder water northwest of the Cape Fred Islands. Might resurrect later on over warmer water, but out in the middle of the ocean and will not be a threat to land after it clears the Cape Fred Islands here, which might see some of their worst weather of the summer um, as this wave comes through, potentially uh, grabbing the name Gabrielle as it does so. Closer to home, the only real thing to watch here is this tropical wave east of the Caribbean. And again, not a lot of thunderstorms with it. You can see a little, of them, little bit of them sheared off to the east here. There is a little bit of a shear flow in front of it at the moment. If it can develop more thunderstorms with it as it gets farther west, this shear will become less of a problem in the configuration it's in right now. But you can see the broad structure with this uh, broad rotation, a uh, bit of a broad low pressure area here. This is a buoy showing falling pressures near the center of the wave and uh, not that impressive, down to about 1,010. 1011 millibars but you can see the broad structure and uh, again these waves here they might be they might not have a lot of thunderstorms with them but the fact that they have this robust low level structure means that as they come farther west you have to watch for them to eventually gain thunderstorms as they come over the warmer water that is in the eastern caribbean and uh, perhaps come into a more favorable environment with more moisture you can see all the activity in here so once it comes farther west into this you never know if it might light up right now there's no model support for true development of this the European and GFS keep this as an open wave the European sends a vort max uh, just north of the Caribbean and the GFS looks to keep it inside the Caribbean that will largely depend on how strong the wave gets in here uh, the stronger it gets the more likely it uh, passes to the north of the Caribbean if it stays weak will likely pass through. But I think there's a case to be made that this wave will have to be watched um, at least in here if not farther west as it gets near the islands and uh, I'm going to show you a few of these waves that have looked like this over the last few years that have developed large waves like this are uh, the type that preceded Hurricane Elena in 1985. This was her preceding wave, big and dry, no thunderstorms with it, did not develop until it reached uh, the vicinity of Hispaniola here, and then of course came into the Gulf of Mexico as a Cat 3, and eventually into Louisiana. This was Irene, uh, should be in recent memory here, 2011, August, again, big dry wave, no thunderstorms with it, didn't develop until it got farther west into warmer water and more favorable conditions, and then ran up the eastern seaboard as a hurricane. And how about Dennis, 1999? Uh, can you guess where he is in this image? This is not him. Uh, this wave uh, looks pretty good, but it's actually this front runner here. Uh, again, absolutely no clouds with this, but it had a robust low-level structure. So as it got farther west, it came into more favorable conditions and eventually ran up towards the Carolinas as a Category 2 hurricane here and eventually came back to shore as a tropical storm after looping around for a while. So... Uh, again, a seemingly weak wave had a structure that allowed it to survive until it made it to more favorable conditions. 
And how about Hurricane Jean 2004? Not this guy. This is Ivan uh, about to lash uh, Jamaica there in the Caribbean preceding her. But this was the wave that eventually became Hurricane Jean. Did not develop until it got all the way up here towards the Caribbean islands again. And then, of course, loop-de-looped into Florida as a Category 3 later. But again, a late developing wave that had large structure um, and eventually developed once it got to more favorable conditions. And here, for comparison, is today's wave. You can see similar large scale structure, very limited convection, but you can see that with these storms that have developed before, they have to be watched as they get farther west here. It's also interesting to note that in all of these storms that actually developed from waves like this, notice that there was a low-level ridge out ahead in the southwestern Atlantic extending into the Bahamas here. There's one in front of Elena. Here's one in front of Irene extending out ahead. And uh, here's Dennis. You can see the low-level ridge all the way to Florida here. And uh, here's Jean again with the low-level ridge out in front. And this is important because um, if you get high pressure out ahead here, you might ask why would low pressure like having high pressure in the way if it's to the north of the wave and it's coming uh, coming out of the southeast towards it. This enhances the pressure gradient on the northern side of the wave and it can really help focus the energy into a more concentrated area and help low pressure to form instead of all the energy escaping off to the north like when fronts when fronts come down here sometimes all the energy just gets uh, strung out from south to north and you can't get development. But when you have the low level ridge in front like this, a strong Bermuda ridge, these storms storms can really get going as they come towards the Caribbean. And you can see with our wave here, there is a low level ridge in front similar to those storms. And it's a little weak right now, but it is expected to strengthen in the Bahamas region as this front here pulls out that trough will leave and this low level ridge is expected to be strong. So as this wave comes in here, it may very well have a favorable pattern to do something interesting. This is the UK Met out to day three. And uh, you can see it coming into the coming into the Lesser Antilles here with a nice sharp wave axis. Uh, so it's not like there's going to be nothing with this. It's going to be um, at least a very strong wave. Could bring uh, tropical storm-like conditions to parts of the Lesser Antilles on the northern side here with the trade winds uh, gusting over gale force and certainly likely to be squalls with this. But you can see the low-level low level structure is... Uh, a pretty decent in here, fairly vigorous wave. And if it comes through the Caribbean, though, you can see the trade winds are very strong in the Central Caribbean. So as this comes west, it would likely lie dormant for a while if it doesn't develop in here. But then maybe on the other side, might have to keep an eye on it. Because if you look at the trade winds right now, check out the angle of the winds coming to Hispaniola here out of the southeast in the Caribbean. And this is unusual. Usually the trade winds are out of the due east right through the Caribbean at this time of year. When you see them coming out of the southeast like this, what this says to you is that there's a pressures lowering to the west and there's air piling up and converging uh, in the western Caribbean. And we've seen a lot of bursts of convection in the western Caribbean for no apparent reason over the last few days, despite really no tropical waves passing through the reason. And this is being aided by the MJO, but you can see the air piling up in here with the trade winds the way they are. So if you have a wave like this coming through, it might fail to develop near the islands. But if it, if it slips south of Hispaniola into the Western Caribbean and into this area near Cuba, um, might have to watch in a pattern like this. And here's the European upper level pattern out to day, uh, day six. You can see a big trough coming in over Maine here. And you see these troughs. But again, because of the warm water over the northwestern Atlantic, you see if you go out a couple days, they end up leaving. You see the trough axis starts to lift out to the northeast. And this is, again, a pattern where you have to watch to the south. Because if you have a trough digging in like this, you start eroding the mid-level ridge. And you allow the tropics to swell to the north in here. And you draw this moisture northward. But then if you make the trough leave, uh, you start building pressures in the wake of the trough to the north. And so when you get this, you have to watch for pressures to be lowering underneath to the south. And so again, in this area near Cuba, might have to watch for the environment to be more favorable than currently forecasted by some of the models uh, if this wave happens to get in there. So right now, again, I'm talking a lot about a pretty weak system because there's nothing else to talk about, to be frank. Uh, but with a, with a low like this, probably going to bring nasty conditions to the islands here. And then it might pass north or just south of the islands. But in this area of the world, in about a week, we may still have it to deal with because of its robust structure. It may not go away for a while. So we'll probably have to keep an eye on it. Um, over the next week to 10 days and uh, see if it is able to do anything in here. Right now, not an imminent threat, uh, but watch it in here to see if it tries to do anything interesting. And then if it fails here, wait for it to get uh, into this area centered around Cuba. Um, it may not go away for a while. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.